This conversation is part of the James J. Blanchard Living Library of Michigan Political History, a project of the Michigan Political History Society. Hello, my name is Lynn Jondahl, and I'm here on behalf of the Michigan Political History Society. I'm here to talk with the Honorable Dennis Archer. Justice Archer has served on the Michigan Supreme Court. He has been mayor of the city of Detroit, and he's been a key figure in Michigan political history since the 1960s. Thank you, Justice Archer, for giving us this time today. I'm looking forward to the conversation with you. Pleased to be here. Thank you. And here we are sitting in your office in Detroit. Yes. And I think you were born in Detroit, right? I was born in Detroit. I lived here for five years. And uh, then I went with my parents to Costopolis, Michigan. That's C-A-S-S-O-P-O-L-I-S. -S -S. Okay. Population 1,500. 1,500. Um, yeah. How I, old were you then? When? Five. Mm -hmm. And um, I started the first grade. Uh, in Gasopolis, and when I graduated from high school, I came back to the city of Detroit to live with my grandmother while I started at Wayne State University. And ultimately, um, left Wayne State University and went to Western Michigan University where I graduated. And um, that's sort of been the first part of the academic endeavors. What, what took your family to, to Gasopolis? I was here because there was my mother brought me here because there was no hospital in Cassopolis. And uh, I was born in the city of Detroit, lived here for five years, and then went back uh, to Cassopolis. Conceived in Cassopolis, born in Detroit, and went back to grow up in Cassopolis. Okay. And then went back to Western after starting out here. Well, I'd say back. Cassopolis is well, kind of Well, they're there. very close. That is to say, for those who are not familiar with Cassopolis, uh, it's about 24 miles from South Bend, Indiana, 14 miles from Niles, 7 miles um, from um, Vandalia, um, and it's about well, 4 miles from Vandalia, 37 from Three Rivers, and about 50-some from Kalamazoo. It's in that pocket. So if I were talking today uh, to people who knew your family in Cassopolis or uh, knew you at Western, uh, or knew you later in law school, or as a teacher, would I be talking to a bunch of people who are amazed and surprised at what you have done? I think so, because I frankly had no idea what I was going to do when I was growing up in Cassopolis. Uh, fact of the matter, in the first five years, as you might imagine, uh, a youngster loving to play and enjoying himself with peers and, and others he used to hate to take a bath. <laughs> when I went to Cassopolis, uh, we didn't have any running water. And so I took a bath in the metal tub every Saturday night. And um, we couldn't get a glass of water when you go to the faucet, etc. And so you uh, can also imagine the follow-up, that is right. to say that there was no indoor facilities. So we had a honey pot for the nighttime and yes. outdoor facilities for um, during the day, whether it happens to be um, 90 degrees or 40 below wind chill factor. Okay. So this, you, you lived there essentially through high school, from, yes. uh, all the way from kindergarten through mm -hmm. uh, uh, high school. Yes. The, uh, came here then for your high school, uh, here being Detroit, for, uh, for your high school, or when you started law school, or no, I've, undergraduate school, I'd wait. That's right, okay. I did. And my dad had a third grade education. He lost his arm uh, just above his left elbow in a car accident before I was born. My mother had a high school diploma. Neither one had ever stepped foot on a college on a college campus. Okay. But they made it very clear to me when I was growing up that I was going to go to college. They couldn't tell me where to go. They couldn't suggest what I, what college I ought to go to, what I ought to do, or want to dream about becoming as a as a professional. 
but I was going to go to college. And so I started working um, when I was eight years old. My first job was a caddy on a golf course, Park Shore, uh, nine hole golf course at the time. Now it's up to 27, I believe, 27 holes. Um, Have you played I, it since? Oh, yes. Mm -hmm. And um, uh, I set pins in our bowling alley before it shut down, and then worked in our bakery, worked for a um, interior decorator who used to uh, be a tremendous artist, but put his art into metal. Uh, his name was Edwin Johnson. And um, I went to school with his son, Winston. And then I started working for uh, Winston's dad, uh, just as I was almost ready to graduate. After I graduated, I lied about my age to work in a furniture factory in Cassopolis, and they found out, oh, less than a month that I was <laughs> too young. And um, they promptly did the right thing. They fired me. And um, I came back to uh, Detroit to start Wayne State University, but I needed money to be able to go to college. So I started working for a real estate company. And then from a real estate company, which, and working for them, I was painting houses. Um, and if you can remember oil-based paint and think about oil-based paint in the summer and painting closets and getting up on ladders and painting uh, the eaves, troughs, etc., paint coming down your arm, etc., through, went through all of that. My first uh, white-collar job was working after uh, school, after college. Uh, you know, I go to college during the day and then in the evening. I worked about three or four hours um, at Henry Ford Hospital for the medical records department. And um, when I started Wayne State University, I went in to see a counselor. The counselor said, what do you want to be? I did not have a clue. I mean, my parents couldn't, didn't suggest, well, why don't you do this and why don't you think about that? But I was impressed with the pharmacist uh, whose drugstore I was working for being a, a stock boy. And so I um, said I want to be a pharmacist. Well, the school system, Cassopolis, was a class C school, meaning that it's class C means it's a smaller school in size mm -hmm. than a class A school, which Lansing, Sexton, and, and all of the larger schools around the state or in Detroit would be class A. Class C was small. and. Um, the only thing we did in chemistry was to make oxygen. So I said pharmacy. And it didn't take but about a year and a half for me and pharmacy not to agree. Yes. So uh, I ventured off and uh, took a short step to the Detroit Institute of Technology. Uh, and it dawned on me with a degree in arts and sciences, I couldn't imagine what job I would have with right. that kind of degree. So I went up to Western Michigan University, and first time I've ever lived away from home, and stayed in the only dorm that did not serve food. It's called Vandercook Hall. That's where a lot of the athletes stayed and the like. We affectionately referred to it as Hungry Hall. And um, I went over to see a counselor, and I, he said, what do you want to do? Well, by that time, I'd met some friends who were teachers, and I was impressed with their infatuation with the profession, uh, the excitement that they had in working with their students. So I said, I'd like to be a high school history teacher. He said, I'd like for you to think about it because we've got so many high school history teachers in our state today that you would be lucky to be able to be hired in a junior high setting to teach history. Why don't you think about it? So I said, okay, I went back to the dorm um, and my roommate was not there, but he had a, then he had a stack of letters like that from school districts from all over the state. So I asked around the dorm and said, my roommate is George Waters. He's got all of these letters from, so what, what's his major? Said he's special education. And it was special education for the educable mentally retarded. Today we refer to our students as learning disabled. So I asked more about it. And the more I asked, the more I became excited about it. So I went back to see the counselor. And then 
I got into that program and just whoop, took off, and I really enjoyed it. So I graduated from Western Michigan University, came back to Detroit, and started teaching in our Detroit public schools. In special ed? In special ed. That, that would have been then just shortly after Michigan adopted special education legislation, as, as am I recalling correctly, uh, and I, I, I hear the story that uh, the advocates, parents, and so on of, of special ed students uh, wanted assurance of a program which the legislature enacted but didn't fund, and so they had to come back and, and petition that. So I, I'm just suggesting you were on uh, in the early days of those uh, uh, those curriculum development for special ed. I can't tell you that I remember. All I know that I wanted to teach. Mm -hmm. I was happy to graduate from Western Michigan University and the thought of making some real money okay. uh, was something that was sort of preeminent in my mind and working with young people rather than the history which gave rise to it. I graduated uh, in 1965 from Western Michigan right. University. So I don't know the, the timing of all of that. And um, I started, um, um, well, I was at Bunch Elementary and in, Detroit. in Detroit. And the principal, Violet Vardy, suggested that the way I work with students and the way I work with my fellow teachers, that in her view, I had the makings of being a very fine principal. And in order for, for me to be able to move in that direction, I would have to get a master's degree uh, in education. So I started down at the Rackham Building at the University of Michigan's uh, off campus uh, to start taking two courses uh, to move towards getting a master's degree. And ironically, the t first two classes that I took, I found that I was using the same two textbooks that I used as an undergraduate at Western Michigan University. And so I was dating this teacher at the time and I started complaining. Some might say whining. <laughs> she, she might say whining. <laughs> about um, uh, taking the classes, and I wasn't frankly learning anything new, not a different, nothing new by way of thoughts, uh, strategy, uh, rationale, etc. And the more I complained, she started saying, why don't you go to law school? And I just said, look, I've never been in a lawyer's office. I don't know what lawyers do. I don't have a clue of what they do. And I would say no. She would say you ought to think about it. And I thought about it and I took the LSAT exam and um, the score suggested that if I went to law school and worked hard I could graduate from law school. Mm -hmm. And um, so I went to law school. This then, then all the way through your undergraduate and your, your professional education program, graduate program, you were working at the same time. Yes. Uh, in a full-time uh, job? I worked part-time when I was at Wayne State. I worked part-time when I was at Detroit Institute of Technology. When I transferred up to Western Michigan University, I worked part-time there too. I was washing pots and pans oh, okay. and um, in a dorm that allowed us to eat oh, because you're at the, the meal that the we washed. Dorm. Thank yes. you very much. <laughs> that allowed us to eat uh, the meal we served. So I ate dinner. Uh, served the, I worked at the dinner meet, a meal, washing pots and pans, and on Sundays, uh, because it was, uh, they really sort of didn't need you, uh, there would be a group of us who lived in Vandercook who went to Walgreens downtown, and they had a brunch, all you can eat. And so we all saved up to make sure that we could go down there and eat, and as we finished, we sort of loaded up our plates again with things that we could put in a napkin that wouldn't cause grease stains in our pockets <laughs> and the like, and apples or whatever they might have so that would have a little something uh, later for the day.